Hello and welcome back to another Age of Sigmar painting tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how you can paint the Nurgle Rotbringer's infantry using the Lord of Plagues as my subject. And as always I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. So here we have the miniature and as you can see it's already been primed. Now I've used the Army Painters Uniform Grey Spray Primer for this, however you could use uh, any colour primer you wish. Now the first task is to paint the skin areas, we're painting all of these areas with Rakar Flesh. Now Rakar Flesh is probably one of my favourite paints, it's uh, extremely versatile, you can use it for the skin areas such as I'm doing here, but you can also use it for areas such as uh, the skull as well at the bottom. So we're painting any bones, any like these skulls items on the miniatures like so, with the Rakar Flesh. Now I've mixed in just a small amount of water into the paint, and this just allows it to flow a little bit more easily, you don't need to apply just a, an awful lot, just a small dash, and it's just a uh, Make sure you get this into all of the recesses on the skin as well. The next step in painting the skin is to achieve some definition um, in between the recesses there and also apply a slightly more flesh coloured look to the skin. And for this we'll be using a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. So for this wash I've watered it down slightly, um, don't want it to be too thick so as you can just about see here I just want it to pull quite lightly into the recesses, just applying it over the entirety of the skin areas that we painted in the previous step. For the next step we want to continue uh, bringing out the pallidness of the skin and for this we'll be using Flayed One Flesh. So I've mixed in the Flayed One Flesh with uh, roughly one pot Flayed One Flesh to one pot Lamium Medium and this creates a nice very thin glaze. I'm just going to be using this to pick out uh, the raised areas. I'm going to be applying quite a lot of this just leaving the darker skin visible in the recesses as you can just about see that I'm doing here. So the next step is to perform a highlight, and we'll be doing this around the, uh, the edges of these pot marks on the skin. And for this we'll be using Pallid Witch Flesh. So using the Pallid Witch Flesh and a small brush, I'll just be picking out the edges of these tears in the skin, like so, just making sure not to apply too much. We only want a very subtle highlight around the edges. We're doing this around anywhere where we have these openings in the flesh. Now that we've got a good base to work from, the next step in painting our flesh is to pick out all of these uh, pot mark sections. We're going to be painting uh, the exposed fat that's beneath the skin, and for this we'll be using a wash of a Cassandora Yellow. Now these washes are going to be very targeted, we're going to be uh, focusing them into these recesses here. So I'm just going to be applying the Cassandora Yellow like so, and you can see it changing the colour to me to be a much more yellow. We're doing the same on all of these pot marks across the miniature. For the next step we want to highlight the interior of these uh, yellow areas and for this we'll be using Dawn Yellow. So for this step just take your small brush here and I'll be using one of my Army Painter ones here and you also want to pick out some of these raised sections inside here. And let's just create a little bit more definition and really make them stand out to make them that little bit much more disgusting. So you can see I'm just picking them out very carefully like so. The next step in painting this miniature is to pick out some of the internal organs. This includes the intestines here and also uh, this kind of raised pustule there just in the front. And we're painting all of these areas with Gene Stealer Purple. Now Gene Stealer Purple isn't a base layer, but if you've primed with a grey primer like I have, you should have no problem applying this over the top like so. But what I've done is I've mixed in a little bit of water into this mix and I'm going to wait for this coat to dry and then apply a second coat. And that'll give me the richest base colour possible. So as you can see we've got some really nice contrasting colours in the intestines compared to the rest of the really pallid skin. Now the next step is to apply some definition uh, both in within the intestines here but also we're going to be applying this wash around the edges of these um, kind of gaps in the skin so to speak. Um, and for this we'll be using Druchi Violet. So this is going to be a, a two-step approach. First of all, we're going to be washing over the intestines entirely, like so, just applying the wash. Now I have mixed this um, in with a small amount of water, maybe about one pot water to one pot Druchy Violet, just to, uh, I don't want to be too strong and too overpowering for the colour. So once I've done that, the next step is to start applying this just around the edges of these open wounds in the flesh, like so, just applying a small purple tinge just to represent the necrotic flesh. So once the wash is dried, you can see we've got this really nice decayed look uh, around all these holes in the, the skin there. The next step is to highlight the purple areas that we painted in the uh, couple of steps ago. And first we'll be using Dakalia Lilac. I would recommend using a small brush for this. And what we want to do is we want to create some lines in the intestine, just to represent the folds. So I'm just gonna be doing some of these perpendicular lines along the edge there pretty much I'll be doing this along all of the intestines. 
And then we actually come to highlight this section here, we're just going to be doing just a, a small highlight just on the top there, like so. So that concludes painting the skin areas. We can now move on to painting some of the bone areas, such as the skull here. So first of all, we'll be uh, washing over the Rakar flesh base that we applied when we uh, tackled the skin uh, with a wash of a Seraphim sepia. With the wash, we want to make sure that it pulls into all of the recesses here and just, just creates a, a nice bone effect. And you just want to see, I'm just making sure that this wash is liberally applied to the skull like so. Once the wash has dried, we can now start highlighting the edge of the skull, and for this, we'll be using Ushabti Bone. In this step, we just want to pick out some of the raised sections, such as the around the eye socket here, around the nose, and also, if you want to, you can pick out some of the individual teeth just at the bottom. I just want to improve the highlighting, improve the, the detail in the skull, which you can just see I'm doing here. The next step in painting this miniature is to paint all of the armor sections, and this includes the helmet, the shoulder pad, the wrist guard there, and also uh, the armor just on the bottom half of the legs. And for this, we'll be using Castellan Green. So I'll be painting the entirety of the armor sections with the Castellan Green, and I've mixed in just a small amount of water just to thin down the coat, and I'll be applying two coats, allowing the first one to dry thoroughly. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem because Castellan Green is a base paint, which means it should cover really nicely over this gray primer. With the base coat applied, we can now start working on creating some depth in the recesses by applying a wash of Athonian Camo Shade. The purpose of this wash is just to provide some depth in the recesses. So you can see I'm making sure that the, the wash is pulling into all of these crevices that we've got on the armor here. Just applying it quite liberally across the armor. With the wash dried, we can now begin highlighting the edges of the armor panels. And for this, we'll be starting off with a highlight of Strachan Green. For this step, I'll be applying the Strachan Green to every single edge of the armor, just applying a very thin line, like so. With the green armor highlighted, the next step is to perform a second extreme highlight. This will be focusing on some of the upper edges and corners, things like that. And for this, we'll be using Nurgling Green. Now, for this step, you want to focus, like I said, on these upper edges. So, for example, on the shoulder pad, this edge is facing more towards the top of the miniature. You want to apply a very small amount of the Nurgling Green along the edges. This just simulates the light reflecting off the, the surface. For the next step, I'll be tackling the horns on the shoulder there and also coming out of the head. And I'm painting these areas, first of all, with Mechanicus Standard Grey. Now, as this is a base coat, we just want to make sure we get a good even coverage of the Mechanicus Standard Grey. And this, uh, even though I've, uh, it's very similar to my base coat, if you're not using a grey base coat, then you'll need to apply this step anyway. So I'm just making sure I don't get it spilled onto the rest of the shoulder pad here. Once the base coat is dry, the next step is to apply a wash over the horns, and we want to uh, really pick out some of the details at the bottom and overall darken the collar there. And for this, we'll be using a wash of non oil. So I'm just going to be applying this wash over the horns, like so. And you can see here it's pulling into the recesses. Now, what I want to do is I want it to mainly um, darken the tips of the horns. So we're going to be focusing the wash mainly at the tops there. This will give it a much darker color when it dries. Once the wash has dried, the next step is to start highlighting the bony spikes, and for this, we'll be using Dawnstone. Now, as I mentioned in the last step, we want to focus the darker areas uh, at the top of the spikes. So I'm going to be mainly applying this highlight towards the bottom here. So I'm just going to be picking out these little ridges just along the bottom. Very carefully dragging my brush along these edges like so. The next step is to apply a second highlight over the horns, and for this, we'll be using Administratum Grey. So similar to how I did it before, I'm just going to be picking out the raised sections. However, I'm going to be focusing this highlight towards the bottom of the horns, like so. And this really emphasizes the color gradient going from light to dark. The next step in painting this miniature is to paint the axe handle and also any leather straps, such as across the chest there and also around the back of the head. And also this, um, this kind of leather material that's just at the back and also around the front as well. I'm painting all of these areas, first of all, with Rhinox Hide. So with Ronox Hide being a base paint, you should have no trouble covering over the, the light grey base coat that we've got here. Just making sure to avoid painting over the skin as we don't want to overspill. The next step consists of two main parts. First of all, we're going to be highlighting the areas we painted in the last step, such as the, uh, the leather areas and also the handle on the weapon. And we're also going to be painting the blade of the axe. We're painting all of these areas with Doomball Brown. Painting the handle is going to be very simple. We just want to pick out the raised sections. You can see them across the handle, which are picking them out with a Doom Ball Brown like so, going along all of them. And then once we've done that, we want to actually paint 
the main body of the axe. And for this, the reason why we're doing this is because we want to get a really nice kind of rusted effect. And this red color wax is a really nice base to work from. You want to make sure you get it across the entirety of the axe like so. You may need to water it down slightly as it's not a base paint. So applying two thin coats is probably a better idea than applying one thick one. Now the final step in painting the wood and the leather areas is to perform a second final highlight of squig orange. So this time I'll be focusing my highlights on these, uh, mainly these spikes here and anywhere where the ridges converge to create a point, so just small dots just along the shaft there. We want a small amount. The same goes for when, when painting uh, the leather areas such as this at the back, which can be focusing on the areas towards the bottom that are slightly more raised than the rest of the leather. Of the leather. With the wood and the leather areas completed, we're going to be uh, painting the small drip that's emanating from the stomach there. And first of all, we're painting this with a warpstone glow. Now, by painting this with the warpstone glow, it'll really stand out compared to the purple and the brown that it's positioned against. And this warpstone glow it acts as an excellent base coat. You can just about to see. Be careful here not to ever spill onto the areas that I've already painted. I'm just mixing a small amount of water here just to improve the flow as well. With the base coat applied, we'll now be applying a second layer of Moot Green. You'll be wanting to focus this Moot Green on two places. First of all, we want to pay, focus on this section here, which is pouring over the handle of the axe. Just apply some thin lines along the edges. And then we also want to uh, paint a small amount on just on the, the blob that's forming at the end of the string as well. The final step in painting the green is to apply a very small amount of Dawn Yellow. So as with our previous step when we painted Dawn Yellow, I'm just going to be applying a very, very small amount in the same place as we did with the Moot Green, just to put only a, a fraction of the area. So I'm just focusing on the top section here, a little bit further down as well, and then again on the ball at the bottom. Now before we move on to the metallics, we're going to want to start painting some of the rust onto the blade there. For this we'll be using Reza Rust. When painting the rust onto the blade, we're going to want to approach it in two different techniques. First of all, we want to do the standard dry brushing technique where you put some paint on your brush, remove the excess uh, onto a piece of paper or tissue until you've only got a small amount. You can just about see if I'm just rubbing against across my skin, you can just see a small amount coming off. We want to apply this to the blade in a perpendicular motion and running it across the edge like so and then down from here. And then we want to get a little bit more Rust, reads of rust onto our brush, and then we want to apply it across the flat sections in a stippling motion. So just patting down, as you can see I'm doing here. Once all of the non-metallic paints have been completed, we can now start moving onto the painting the silver area. So first of all, we'll be starting off with lead balcony. We're painting this on the chain mail around the front and also the back of the miniature. So I'll just be applying this lead balcony over the entirety of the chainmail here. As again, just be very careful not to overspill, you don't want to paint over the matte areas. And as you can just see, I'm making sure that I work this paint into all of these recesses here. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes, but we will be applying a wash next, which will help to remedy any you may have missed. With the silver dried, I'll now be applying some bronze over the, uh, the flying detail on the arm guard there, and also the medallion is just hanging from the waist there as well. I'll be using Balthazar Gold for this. So as it's a base paint, you should have no problem covering over these areas. Just be very, very careful not to overspill, especially on the fly detail here, as some of the sections are quite small. I'd also recommend using a smaller brush as possible. So once you've painted the bronze areas, the next step is to apply a little bit of shading uh, onto the metallic areas, and for this we'll be using Typhus Corrosion. Typhus Corrosion is an excellent wash to use when you want to achieve a grimy, um, oil-stricken kind of look, which is perfect for these Nurgle miniatures. I'm just applying this wash quite liberally over the surface. Now what I'm going to do is, once I've applied it, I'm going to actually be removing some of it with, a, um, with some water. And I'll just remember to get some water on my brush now. And I'm just going to be dragging this dirt out just to, so it pulls in some recesses and not so much in others and just gives us some really nice variation in the shading. Now the final step in painting the metallics is to highlight all of the edges of everywhere that we've painted so far, including the axe blade there with Iron Breaker. So we'll be approaching this in several different ways. First of all, we'll be uh, picking out the edges of the bronze, just applying a very small amount of Iron Breaker just to the tips there. Like so, and we're doing the same kind of thing onto the chain mail as well. We're just going to be picking out some of the individual links towards the bottom of the chain mail skirt. However, when we actually come to paint 
the axe we're going to be doing it slightly differently. So instead of painting these individual sections with a brush, I'll be instead using a dry brush. And I'll be applying this in a similar fashion to we did with the Reza Rust, uh, mainly focusing my attention towards the blade here. And I'll create this nice scuffed effect as if, as the axe has been used, it's been knocking the rust from the blade. And here we have the completed miniature, who you can see I've also based. Now whilst this tutorial focused on the Lord of Plagues, you could use the exact colours and techniques that I've used on this miniature and apply them to other Rotbringer miniatures such as the Putrid Blight Kings. If you enjoyed this tutorial, do let me know in the comments below and also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. Additionally, by clicking on the small eye in the top right corner of the video, you can help me choose which miniature I should paint next. And finally, if you would like to support me in making more tutorials in the future, you can do so by heading over to my Patreon page, which you can see a link to on the screen now. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, and that'll just help me to produce more tutorials in the future. So thanks for watching, and goodbye.